We're just counting down the days until Breath of the Wild 2. But until then, we're still finding new things in the first game to this day. So if you enjoyed this series, give this video a like. There's at least one thing you'll learn with each video. Alright, let's go. Ever seen a dragon with the case of the zoomies? Strike it with an arrow right as you go into bullet time to see it blast off into the sunset. Sand seals are a common sight in the Gerudo Desert, but have you ever seen one outside of the desert? They will normally seek out sandy terrain if they are stuck on something rough. But this does mean any sandy area, including beaches. By pushing the sand seal rental lady out of the desert, then freezing yourself as you talk to her, you can smuggle the seal out of bounds. It won't make it too far on its own on regular old dirt. But if you're dedicated enough for a long trek, you can carry it to another beach and go for a nice coastal ride. And you can ride seals through shallow water. Makes sense. These types of wooden platforms aren't just simple traps that fall down. They hinge both ways like a door, going in both directions. You can even make a moblin drown in a waterfall this way. I'm sure at some point you may have made the fatal mistake of having your horse take a nosedive straight off a cliff edge and fall to its doom. It was bound to happen. But there's still hope. Just freeze it with an ice arrow and it'll be fine when it lands. Did you know that the original damaged Master Sword actually exists in the game? Only available through mods unfortunately though, this actually holds several interesting tidbits on its own. Most players think it's covered in rust, but it's actually Malice that's covered the blade from Link's past battles. Since this was designed for cutscenes only and never made it into the final game, development for it was minimal, with no description and only an attack power of 1. But if you listen closely, the sheathing noise is slightly different. That's because it still uses the same original sound effects from the early development before they changed it, which could be heard during the E3 2016 build. Uh, that rolling issue we were having over that crest there, but he's nice nice nice. I was wondering if you could take. Did you know that you can crouch through these doors when they're sideways in Barudania? Here's a funny fact about the Hinox. During the initial development of Breath of the Wild, they sketched some ideas about the Hinox's habits and quirks, which is pretty cute. One of them was the ability to somersault. While that never made it into this game, this attack did make it into another game, Age of Calamity. It's fairly hard to notice because most enemies drop their weapons in a messy pile when they die. But when Lionels are defeated, their weapon drops in relation to where they're located on their body. You can see the sword and shield along the ground where its arms are, and the bow on the Lionel's back in the same places. These stone slabs are usually a hint for you to stasis them and launch them away for goodies underneath. But it's much easier and much more efficient durability-wise if you use a metal bow or specific weapons to lift up the cover instead. Guardians have recoil when they fire their laser, but their legs help keep them grounded. If you cut off a guardian's legs altogether, you can see this in action, and you can take advantage of it by firing at their lower weak spot when it's exposed. Robbie's favorite place to relax is in his lawn chair up on top of the Akala Ancient Tech Lab. You can even see an extra pair of his glasses up here. But did you know he's not looking at the sky or even Death Mountain? According to Creating a Champion, he enjoys zoning out and staring at the Ancient Furnace, which you have a clear line of sight of from here. He really loves his ancient tech. Lazelfo's water shots can be parried or blocked obviously, but there's another weird way to deflect it. By pulling out a bomb at just the right time, it'll knock away the shot with no problem. Guardians are pretty terrifying. Once they lock their aim onto you, they're guaranteed to fire unless you break line of sight. But there's a really easy trick that you can use to camouflage yourself. Simply magnesis the air, then drop any item. Yep, that's it. Then they're unable to lock onto you, as long as you don't move. When you mag drop items, it creates what's called a null item, an invisible hitbox that can be picked up, and physically blocks some things such as launched metal boxes and guardians line of sight. 
this tech is pretty useful in a pinch to defend yourself against these hulky machines. The explosive cannonball is actually kind of weird on closer inspection. You can clearly see what's loaded is a natural looking boulder inside, but when it's launched, it seems to turn into a perfectly smooth, solid manufactured ball of iron, with straight lines wrapping around the sides of the ball. Just an interesting oversight by the developers. Or some magical cannon, I guess. Barrels won't protect you from elemental damage, but do block arrows. And Zan's helmet or the Thunder Helm won't protect you from the arrow damage itself, only the elemental damage. But combine the two together to defend yourself against a Lionel's dangerous elemental shots. Ever wanted to clean up Link's look but still use the Shiga Slate abilities? If you want to walk around slateless, use the old apparatus storage glitch, then load a file quickly after entering bullet time. The slate will be gone, but you can still use rune abilities. And some cutscenes will be more awkward. Most people haven't taken a close look around the final room in the Trial of the Sword. Along the walls, you can see many notable locations of Hyrule, each in mostly the right directions according to the compass, such as Death Mountain, the Great Deku Tree in the Great Hyrule Forest, Hebra Mountains, Divine Beast Va Meadow, the Thundra Plateau, Satori Mountain with the Gerudo Highlands in the background, Divine Beast Va Naburis, the Great Plateau, Dueling Peaks, Pillars of Levia, Mount Laneru, Divine Beast Varuta, the Zora Domain's Giant Fish, and Shatterback Point. There are many Divine Beast designs that were sketched out for development, four which made it in and others scrapped, but one of these scrapped beasts actually sort of still made it in. This Stingray Beast, which is hanging up in the Hateno Tech Lab. The mystery surrounding Link's family has never really been addressed, as pretty much the only time his father was mentioned was in this one cutscene. Your path seems to mirror your father's. You've dedicated yourself to becoming a knight as well. But there's a secret photograph that's rarely seen in the Breath of the Wild Masterworks book, showing Link in his champion's tunic with his father and his sister. Strange thing is there's another book called Creating a Champion, which is the English translation of the before mentioned masterworks. And in the English version specifically, this page was replaced, hiding the photograph. While it may be for retcon reasons, we will never know if this photograph is something Nintendo ever wanted us to see. And there you go. What was your favorite thing you learned this time? Let us know in the comments below. And if you continue to enjoy new Breath of the Wild videos, we have a playlist with tons of stuff we still make to this day. For everything else gaming, keep it here on GameSpot.